So then, Gears Workshop have finally done the impossible. They have taken the unprecedented move to resolve Warhammer's biggest scam. And on the face of it, this seems to be an amazing movement. However, because we're dealing with the Games Workshop and Warhammer, things can never just be good. And in this case, the new change is being delivered in a Trojan horse, one that might end up tricking a lot of hobbyists. And as a result, I'm finding myself extremely conflicted about this new announcement. It could either be amazing or it could be awful. But to even begin talking about it, I have to first talk about a bunch of new model reveals because Games Workshop were very sneaky in how they announced all this. But hey, at least that means I get to fulfill one of my lowest priority bucket list items, which has come as a little bit of a surprise. So, do you like gnomes? Because, uh, yeah. You've been gnomed. See, last week at the Warhammer World Anniversary event, Games Workshop revealed gnomes. And I, for one, am pretty shocked about this. I did not see gnomes coming to Warhammer anytime soon, but here they are in all their cute small boy energy. I really love these little guys, these Rumpelstiltskings. These models are for Blood Bowl, which I know is a game that nobody plays, but I do, and I'm a Snotling player, and therefore I have to welcome more little lads to the field. I just like it whenever there are other models on the field that I could potentially tackle. Gnomes are a pretty weird faction to make for the game, though, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm pretty sure that lots of people are probably going to be scratching their head after this announcement. Gnomes are one of the more obscure creatures that exist in Warhammer Fantasy. I think most people don't even know that they do exist there, but they do. They're, they're an obscure bit of lore, but they have been mentioned here and there. And one of the interesting elements of gnomes is that they are a sort of weird fae creature that are just intrinsically magical, which means, therefore, that in Warhammer Fantasy, the Empire are trying to hunt them all down and exterminate them. <laughs> oh, grimdark. But this is Blood Bowl, so that means whimsy. A lot more whimsy. And it really works for these models. I really like them. I have to imagine that the goose and the badger are more than likely going to be probably some fan favorites out there, but personally, I love the little foxes. They, they just look really cute. Look at this little guy. He's got the ball. He's so happy about it. I love that. But I suppose that nobody's going to give a fox. I do have a few nitpicks here and there though. For example, this is the Beast Master model and right away we see a little bit of a problem that all Blood Bowl teams have. The model kits for each team is just one sprue, but repeated. This means that all the Beast Masters look identical and they, they look really weird as a result. That's probably my biggest problem with Blood Bowl teams right now. And because the gnomes are a stunty team, they are getting their very own big guy. And in this case, it's a tree man. And that that's cool, but I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed in them. See, Halflings already exist as a team, and they're a small team, and they have a tree man already. So I would have liked something a little bit different here, something we've never seen before. The model itself looks cool, but yeah, just a little bit disappointing there. Overall, though, I'm a big fan of these gnomes. They're pretty novel. It's cool to see a Warhammer Fantasy pub quiz answer get released into a miniature format. They're not super standout or anything, but for what they are, I think they're cool. Personally, I think I'd prefer these slightly more twisted versions of gnomes from warp miniatures, but I'm glad that Blood Bowl exists and that allows the designers of our Games Workshop to create some weird and wacky new miniatures because, I mean, it, it can't be all grimdark all the time, right? Wait, I, my favorite shoe is Batman the Animated Series. Of course it can be all grimdark all the time. Prepare to cower before the uncanny condiment but that's the gnome bullshit out of the way. Let's talk about some sci-fi or space medieval fantasy eugenics fi. Because custodies are getting a new codex this year. And what does that mean? New miniatures. Well, miniature. They're getting the brand spanking new shield captain. And truth be told, I'm really not sure what distinguishes this guy from any other custodian. But I guess we all know he's in charge because he has a giant tactical pillar. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Hey, at least Games Workshop have added some new terrain to their digital library. This ain't just another tactical rock, folks. So, you know, that, that's kind of exciting. But, 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 it's not all bad. I do like this model's pose, at least. I mean, sure, he's just another model pointing off into the middle distance. But this time, he's not pointing with a finger. He's pointing with a spear. That, that That's pretty different. It reminds me of the Warcraft 3 opening cinematic, at least. So, so that's kind of neat. I'm being 
a little bit nitpicky here. I, I like his shield. I think that's cool. The shoulder cape looks cool. I like the eagle helmet. But overall, I'm just not a fan of this model. His silhouette is a bit broad. He looks a little bit squat. Honestly, to be perfectly frank, this guy looks like a firstborn space marine to my eye. So I'm not super hyped about the actual miniature release, though there is something really interesting about this model. And it's that the shield captain already has an existing model in the Custodes miniature line. In fact, it already has two entire models in two different kits. This is a new variation on a unit profile that already has plenty of options to work with. So that's kind of interesting. And honestly, I'm all here for it. I think this is a great decision. If Games Workshop are going to release at least one new miniature every single time an army gets an updated codex, then I'd rather them just create new miniatures, new variations on already existing units and release those, like in this instance, rather than inventing new stat lines and unit profiles and stat sheets and entire new units just to justify another new model release. Because if they do that every time they release a codex, all the armies are just going to become very bloated over time. Whereas this way, they can create alternative sculpts for the CM unit, and that means that the armies won't become bloated, and players can actually distinguish their own armies a little bit better, and have new content to buy that isn't mandatory. Instead, it's like optional skins. And bear in mind, the Games Workshop seem to be insistent these days on every single character model being monoposed. So this way, we actually do get some variations. It's kind of funny, this is a bit of a throwback to how they used to do things. Games Workshop used to release all sorts of variations on the same model all the time. You used to be able to buy loads of different priest models and commissars and inquisitors, and they all used the same unit profile, but they all just had different poses and different war gear options. And it, it looked really cool, honestly, but at some stage, Games Workshop just kind of stopped doing that. So I hope that this is just the beginning of a new resurgence in variations and skin models. Skins! for models. Hmm, lovely skin. Collect your skins today. So overall, not a big fan of the model, but that's fine. There's plenty of options out there. But the next Warhammer 40k release is the one that I've been personally most looking forward to. Now, here's the deal. I've been playing Warhammer for a really, really long time. And I currently have a Dracari army. I've got a Sisters of Battle army. I've got an Imperial Guard army. I've got a Gene Stealer cult army. And I accidentally have a space marine army. Never bet and drink, folks. And that obviously is way too many armies. I do not need another army. And yet, I sure do love orcs. They're just calling to me. So I've been kind of watching and waiting on the sidelines to see what Games Workshop does with orcs, whether or not they're going to get any new releases. And it's been a pretty disappointing couple of years, not going to lie. Personally, I'm just not a big fan of Beast Snaggers. And the new boys refresh kind of was the worst model release in the history of Warhammer, like ever. So yeah, that that's pretty sad. Now, luckily, that seems to be a trend that is breaking because the model revealed at this Warhammer World Anniversary event was really cool. It's the new big mech model, and I, I actually really like it. He has a little bit of an unusual gait about him for an orc. He's pretty slender, probably on a diet or something. And he gets a couple of head options, which is neat. Looks like you can have a yelling orc with goggles or a super serious orc with a metal plate. Oh, okay. Uh, he also has a couple of gun options too, but which is nice, but... <sighs> Okay, again, for orcs, this is a little bit of a problem. This model is extremely monopose, and he has a very distinctive pose at that. And that means that everyone's big mech is going to look the same at a distance, and that's really disappointing. I think orcs are one of those armies that should look super different depending on who has actually built them and painted them. And they do have a massive miniature range already, like six different models for orc trucks. All of them fantastic, by the way. But honestly, I just feel like orcs overall as a miniature range, they could really use a refresh. Speaking of which, to buy this single Big Mac, it looks like you're gonna need to spend like $200 redos on some of the oldest model kits in the entire Orc lineup. Because of course, Games Workshop, they're at it again. This new model can only be bought by buying the new Stompa Boys Battle Force filled with the old Luna models, the old Burna Boy models, the, again, the worst boys models ever made, and the Stompa, which is a, uh, 
Mm, that's a very specific, very expensive piece of kit. Uh, at least the battle wagon in here is pretty cool. I'm not a fan of this battle force personally, and I am extremely frustrated that Games Workshop have decided once again to put a single new model hidden away in a massive exclusive box set. And again, not tell us when or if he's ever going to be released separately. And the box overall honestly feels a bit like a stock clear out. There is one upside though, a little bit of a ray of sunshine. It looks like this will not be the only way to buy into the new orc codex. So yeah, Tiny improvement there, baby steps, baby steps. Or is it? Which brings me to the next reveal because things are about to get very spicy. So during the Warhammer anniversary event last weekend, Games Workshop revealed these models. These are Chaos Marauder. <coughs> I mean, Chaos Dark Oath? These are for Age of Sigmar, I, I think. They never actually said what game line is for, but I'm assuming Age of Sigmar. And apparently these models are all based on characters featured in an episode of Hammer and Bolter on Warhammer Plus. But I'm just gonna be honest, I I've not watched it. Uh, I haven't subscribed to Warhammer Plus. I like these models though. I think these models are really cool. I'm, I'm a big fan of them. These remind me of the Warlord Games models slain. And just as I was writing up my thoughts on these miniatures, Games Workshop then revealed this new box set. It's an entire army box bundle called the Dark Oath Army Set. And Wow, this blew me away. Low-key, these might be some of my favorite miniatures from Games Workshop, at least in recent memory. At the very least, they're the best barbarian-style minis that Games Workshop have ever done. I mean, talk about a glow-up. The old Marauder models that Warriors of Chaos used to have to use, they might be some of the worst-looking models in the entire Age of Sigmar lineup. They've aged really badly, and even when I collected Chaos back in, like, 2008, they looked really bad then. I actually quit collecting Warriors of Chaos back in the day because I did not like the look of the Chaos Marauders. So I'm glad that they have finally been replaced. And the new minis are just fantastic. These look like they have sprung straight out of a Frazetta painting. I'm a huge fan. I love that there's both guys and girls in here too. Though one massive problem I do have with this box set is that the models look extremely monopose. Very, very, very monopose. And that kind of sucks, honestly. It sort of puts me off buying into them because they're all just gonna look the same. And Chaos Marauders, I mean, traditionally, they used to be the type of model that you would want a lot of. But at the very least, these seem pretty easy to paint. You just get some lead belcher, a contrast skin paint, and some wood, and away you go. And hey, look! They actually include horses, like real horses, not like some weird bird chuckaboo creature. That's good, right? Oh, I just really wish that these models were more poseable. They're a little bit more old school. So, okay, the miniatures look nice. They look good, awesome. But here is where we get to the revolutionary part of all of this. So yes, these models are being released in an exclusive army bundle box. That is a problem. They're not going to be available separately, at least for some period of time. Likewise, there are war scrolls and tokens in here that are not being released separately that are going to be exclusive to this army box set. Naughty naughty, I do not like this. And obviously this raises the barrier to enter. It raises the price to collect these models and it makes things worse for everyone whose name doesn't start with ga and end with op. However, there is a battle tome supplement inside this box too. A, a codex supplement, basically, if you're talking about it in 40k. And this isn't being released separately either. Boo! However, it's not being released separately in a physical format. See, this is where we add the spice. It is being released as a PDF, according to Games Workshop. And this is genuinely massive. Finally, hobbyists will not need to spend hundreds of dollars just to keep up with the rules of a game that they have likely already spent hundreds of dollars to buy into already. And that's genuinely fantastic. I'm really happy the Games Workshop have made the rules for all these models available for free, or at least they're going to. I hope that this gets replicated in future. I hope that this comes to Warhammer 40k as well, whenever new codices come out in future and, and gets backdated to all the new codices that came out in 10th edition Warhammer 40k. Now, there could be a few reasons for why 
Games Workshop are doing this. Option one is the Games Workshop have realized that asking players to buy massive bundles just to get the necessary rules to use their models is probably what is considered in bird culture a dick move. I call this the neutral good option. Or option two is that there is going to be a very limited number of these Dark Oath boxes because of the, you know, ongoing problems that GW have had with manufacturing enough miniatures already to meet demand with their current roster. Never mind new models. I call this option the lawful neutral one. Or option three. It could be because Games Workshop are tricking everyone with this box set and they just don't want to admit it. So they're trying to mitigate the damage that their entire business model is going to do to an entire generation of hobbyists. I call this option the chaotic evil option. And what I mean by this is that this early access box set contains new rules for an army in third edition Age of Sigmar. However, in just a few months, Games Workshop are going to announce a new edition of Age of Sigmar. I can tell because the stars are right. I've consulted the bones and like clockwork, every three years, Games Workshop does a new edition of a flagship game, whether it needs it or not. Because fuck you, Big Papa needs himself a new fancy watch and Age of Sigmar, it's time. This means that if the only way to get the the new Battle Tome supplement for Dark Oath was to buy this box set, then in a few months time, whenever it's rendered utterly redundant, Games Workshop would have a lot of very angry customers because this box would be a massive scam for anybody buying it for the rules. And I can say from personal experience that buying a rule book only for it to be made redundant almost immediately afterwards is extremely frustrating. Hello there, fellow Imperial Guard players. So Games Workshop might have learned from their past mistakes and are now simply releasing the rules for free to prevent this being too much of an issue and overshadowing the new launch of Age of Sigmar 4th edition. Of course, there is another solution, which is to not release a new rule set every three years, whether the game needs it or not, but <laughs> I digress. And yet, whatever the reason for this change, for giving us the rules in this box for free as a PDF without having to buy it, I'm glad they're doing it. I'm really glad they're doing it, regardless of the reason. But I have to admit, I really, really hope that this marks the beginning of a fundamental shift in how Games Workshop sell their rules and that they are finally beginning to embrace the digital revolution in Warhammer. Uh, admittedly, about 15 years too late, but go ahead, release future battle tomes as free PDFs alongside actual physical copies. I think Games Workshop will make plenty of money on battle tomes and codices, even if they were selling the rules for free as well, because people want the art. Also, I'm genuinely surprised that Games Workshop are not hiding these rules behind a subscription-based app. That's genuinely great. That That's really good. Good, good job. And maybe I shouldn't have said that though. I really hope they don't get the wrong idea from this video. But what do you think? Why not tell me this weekend in my patrons only live stream, something I do every month. If you want to join me there and get a whole free war game and a bonus video every single month, then check out my Patreon linked below. And a massive thanks to my patrons, especially CryptoKev, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye